I see lots of young people in the room. Have you guys ever been to Prague? It's a great city. Lots of sightseeing, lots of nice bars. But in case you wanted to go there this fall, I need to warn you that there's a ban on all spirits sold in the country. The reason is that they found 19 people who died because they drank fake alcohol, which was mixed with methanol. And another 30 people are now in artificial coma or blind. Last week in South Korea, they had to shut down two nuclear reactors because they found 5,000 fake parts in them. So it seems that nowadays everything can be fake. You, for instance, your watch might be a fake. <laughs> Why not? You think it's genuine because you bought it at an official retailer? But they fake entire shops now. Have a look at this Apple store in China, a fake Apple store. In one city in China, they found not one, not two, but 22 fake Apple stores. And everything was fake. The devices, iPad, iPod, but also the accessories, the furniture, the wall, everything. Everything except the employees who were so disappointed to learn they were not working for Apple. <laughs> but for a counterfeiter's ring. Counterfeiting has become so insane that even counterfeiters complain about being tricked by other counterfeiters. But counterfeiting is not a new problem. In fact, it started 8,000 years ago with the beginning of trade. And during the Roman Empire, the stoppers or caps they were putting on Amphorac which contained a seal indicating provenance, like the one you see here on the screen, were massively counterfeited. However, in the past, to be a counterfeiter, you needed to have special expertise, dedication, material. It was not easy to be a counterfeiter. But today, these are the tools of the modern counterfeiter, the printer, the scanner and the PC with the image processing software and Photoshop. That's all you need to make the perfect copy. And it's easy, so easy that, do you know the age of the youngest counterfeiter found by the police? Seven years old. So it does seem that the human hand can copy all what the human hand creates. Or as we say today, if you can make it, they can fake it. But is this the equivalent of a fundamental law of physics that everything can be faked? Imagine going to a supermarket and being afraid to buy fake food that could harm or kill your children. 60 children died in China because they drank fake baby formula. Imagine having one of your children or relative being sick and not treated properly, eventually dying because they use fake medication. 700,000 people die from malaria and tuberculosis who would have been treated correctly if they had received genuine medication. Should we be afraid to drive our car because the brake pads are fake and ineffective? Or should we be afraid to have a fire in our house because the electrical cords are defective? Counterfeiting is a global problem and it requires a global response. And right here in Geneva, we have three major organizations who are working on that response. We have the World Intellectual Property Organization, the World Trade Organization, and the World Health Organization. But frankly, these policymakers, diplomats, and bureaucrats can write down the rules of the game, but they cannot control the play. So why don't we go out and catch the bad guys, investigate illicit supply chains, shut down the factories who make the counterfeits? Last month in Africa, 
The World Custom Organization coordinated an operation with 16 countries, and they seized 82 million fake pills for life-saving medications. This is really good, and we need to keep the pressure up on counterfeiters. But still, this is a bit like playing whack-a-mole. This game, very popular in the US, where you have a hammer and you hit on a squirrel, and when you hit on a squirrel here, another one pops over here. And counterfeiters are like the squirrels. As long as there's, there's profit to be made, you will see new ones appearing after you cut the previous counterfeiters. So, but the core problem is that no one, not us of, of course, but not even the expert can make the difference between the fake and the, and the genuine. It's such a huge challenge, counterfeiting, that it requires all of us to be involved. And imagine if we had the tool that allowed us to verify the authenticity of any goods we're buying. Here I'm not talking about uh, buying a luxury bag in the street for a tenth of the price. We all know that's a fake. But I'm talking of buying uh, things that hurt us if they were fake and that no one in the sane mind would ever buy. We have security features already. We have the hologram on credit card. It was introduced 30 years ago. Something very easy to verify, something which was very difficult to copy. But now, you can buy holograms from hundreds of suppliers on the web. There's nothing easier than to, to copy hologram. So this is not working so well. So what about instead of using something very uh, easy to verify but now easy to copy, let's use something which is harder to copy. Something like a tagant, invisible ink, microparticles. But the problem is that it's hard to verify as well. You need a special reading device for it. We don't have that device. Very few experts have them. So it's a bit useful, but not very much. Let's have a look at banknotes. Banknotes contain between 30 and 50 different security features on them, and in the hope that no counterfeiter will manage to copy all of them. But in recent years, we started to see what they call a super note, a counterfeit banknote which contains every single security feature on it. Even then, this model is not applicable to protect our billions of products that we consume every day because it's not scalable and it's, it's too costly. So I could go on and on like this and you get the point. You know, everything can be copied. But I'd like to give you some hope here. I'd like to talk to you about my invention. I invented a simple graphic. It's printed with a normal printer. You could print it with your PC printer at home. How to verify it? You actually read it with a simple imaging device, even a mobile phone. It is mathematically impossible to copy. A counterfeiter equipped with the best scanner in the world and the same printer as you would not be able to make a copy. This is true today and will remain true tomorrow. And it costs virtually nothing. It's a simple bitmap image printed on normal paper. So how does it work? Let's have a look at the weapons of the modern counterfeiter. The scanner, uh, the PC, the printer. We can't do anything with the scanner. I, I told you that counterfeiter can have the best scanner in the world, can scan everything. With the PC, he has image processing software, and he, he can just improve the quality of the scan before making the copy. So, but what about the printer? Perhaps we can catch him when he prints the copy. So let's have a look at printing. So if you print something like a page of text or just letter E, I mean, you're gonna get letter E on paper as expected, but what does happen when you print a single pixel? A single pixel which looks square on, you, on your PC screen 
uh, when you print it on your, on your PC printer, will be about 40 microns large, like the width of a human hair. Well, you might expect to get something square again or, or something round, but actually you get something like this. Pretty random, huh? Like this. It changes every time, like this or like that. Every time you print a pixel, you will, will get a different result. Like snowflakes, no two pixels, once printed, will look the same. But that's not enough. Because the counterfeiter knows there's a pixel, and he can reconstruct it with Photoshop. So we need to use something more complex, a more complex graphical structure, which once printed, looks like this, and it's absolutely unusable by the counterfeiter. The counterfeiter is unable to reconstruct the source from this scan here. Let's look now at the whole process of, from the digital image to the printed original to the copy. When we start with the original image, it has 100% of the information. What you see here, by the way, is just the top left corner of the, of the previous graphic. When you print it, 30% of information is lost. This is normal ex as expected. But once, if someone tries to make a copy, even using the best scanner and the same printer as you, it would never be able to exceed 50% information. A photocopy, in contrast, would give perhaps 25%. So by setting a, a threshold here at 60, we can differentiate all copies from all original. This is backed by mathematical equation, but don't be afraid. I'm not gonna get into that. Just to tell you that from this mathematical model, we can design the graphical structure which is maximally difficult to copy by the counterfeiter. And so to sum it up, we use the fact that printing is inherently noisy and loses information. We develop certain graphical structure which maximizes this loss. And as copies require, need to be go to two scanning printing process versus one for an original print, copies always have less information. It's not up to us to verify the authenticity of a copy. We use an algorithm that measures the amount of information in the graphic from a scanned image. This principle is universal and can be applied on anything. Of course, an, any product on, which, uh, which uses uh, uh, paper or cardboard, but also leather, metal, plastic, glass, as long as there's a way to apply the code on a material and there's natural degradation during the application of the code, and if there's a way to make to digitize the code with, um, for example, a mobile phone afterwards, then we can use the principle. So throughout history, we played an arm race with the counterfeiters. We used the newer technologies to increase the protection of our product, documents, and banknotes. But the counterfeiters were very quick to catch up and use the same technologies or other technologies to break the protection. But with the digital revolution and those weapons that are the, the PC, the scanner, and the printer in the hand of the counter, counterfeiters, we thought they had gained a definitive edge. Paradoxically, using this secure graphic I showed you, we can turn the weapons of the counterfeiter against him and actually make it impossible for him to make successful copies. So my dream is that this graphic becomes the barcode of the 21st century, empowering us to verify and trust our brands, our products, our medication, our food, such that no one ever gets hurt again by a counterfeiter.